Welcome to the first installment of Answering Your Questions, where I answer a question from the comment section of my video to help you find success on your unorthodox weight loss journey. And why do I say unorthodox? Because we're including fasting, but we are all about that metabolic flexibility because that's how I found success on my journey. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Dana Joy, and I've lost the majority of my weight with a combination of eating a one meal a day diet. So one meal a day, it's just compressing your calories within a four hour eating window or a one hour eating window. When I first started my journey off at 229 pounds with OMAD, I did do one plate a day here and there, but that was sparing. I made sure to get at least minimum 1200 calories on my journey. However, it's not about the number, it's about figuring out what works for you. So I lost it with intermittent fasting and I've lost it with keto. Keto has been the most success I found on my weight loss journey. I started my journey off at 282 pounds after putting on that weight due to an injury I got postpartum and I developed metabolic disease. I had issues with my thyroid, my pancreas was inflamed, my liver, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and I had severe acid reflux and the whole lot. But I reversed most of it through diet and exercise. These are reversible things and stuff I had with my fatty liver, which is actually a sign of insulin resistance. So it's all about the diet, the diet, the diet that we're eating is destroying us all. Anyway, let's jump into today's topic. And this topic is about combining OMAD and ADAP. So we are gonna talk about this person's struggle on their weight loss journey with fasting. So let's jump into it and I'll give you my two cents. Hi, I love your videos. I need help. I've been doing OMAD after ADF and I'm gaining and losing weight every other day. I eat and I fast clean water only. I walk at least 12,000 steps a day. What am I doing wrong? So I'm gonna have to make tons of assumptions because I don't know a lot. I'm just gonna go based on what I think people are doing wrong. So you're doing OMAD with ADF. That is a very intense form of fasting. What people need to understand is that when you fast too intensely for too long, your body is going to fight you. Your body is gonna wanna retain that weight. It is so important to flip in and out of different styles of fasting. Fasting is a tool. Fasting is not something you depend on strictly for weight loss. You use it as a tool, for example, like this. Let's say you're starting your weight loss journey and you wanna get into ketosis. The fastest way to get into ketosis is through an extended fast. It could be a 24 hour, anywhere to, between a 24 hour to a 72 hour fast. For me, it was 48. And then you use the piggybacking off that fast to jump into a keto diet or to jump into OMAD. Now this is something you do when you've been struggling and you ha you're morbidly obese and you have not been finding success. Now, if you've been doing one method of fasting like ADF and OMAD over and over again and your body is stuck, you need to switch things up. You need to look at your nutrition. What are you doing? What are you eating? Perhaps go to a keto diet. The keto diet has been pivotal because I notice when you do intense fasting with carbohydrates, your body's gonna retain. But when you're on a keto diet and that's 80-20 keto, 80% fat, 20% protein and carbs non-existent, just in the form of fiber, your body is gonna be forced to go the metabolic pathway of creating ketones for energy because that's your, all you're giving it. You're giving it high fat and moderate protein. So when your body's forced to go down that metabolic pathway with keto, that means your body's gonna be forced to burn fat. Keto is something I'm trying to juggle into my journey right now. I want to jump back into keto because I find that the most success with keto, especially when cutting while building muscle, because the keto diet does help you retain muscle as you are cutting. I feel like that's like one of the best diets to do so. I know a few bodybuilders use keto and to each their own. Everyone will have their opinion, but in my journey, I've been the most muscular I've been in my life. And that was due to my keto diet combined with one meal a day. But going back to this, if you are doing ADF with OMAD, that's a lot of fasting. And when you fast too much, you put your body into a state of stress. Fasting is a state of hermetic stress. But if you are going intense with your fasting, you're going to put your body in a state of high stress. 
So your cortisol levels are going to be up. This is why it's so important to vary your fast. This is what Dr. Mindy Pell say, says all the time. Vary your fast. Vary your eating window. Switch things up because that's where weight loss happens. Weight loss happens when you switch things up, when things are not working for you. Keep that in mind. I know on my journey with Keto Omad, I definitely did switch things up, maintain for a bit, given my body a chance to adjust, and then I went back and I was able to lose. ADF, personally, my opinion about ADF, I think it should be done no more, max than two weeks. If you have a lot of weight to lose, maybe a month, I still think that's pushing it. For me, I will never do ADF for more than like one cycle, which is like fast for 36 hours and then eat and then fast for 36 hours and then eat. So two back to back 36. I won't do it. It's too intense on the body. So what is going on with you right now? Your body's probably resisting. So I would say to keep things safe, practice eating throughout the day, maybe eating a keto diet throughout the day. Because what's happening is your body's not going to want to let go of your weight because the intense fasting is stressing it out. Like, I'm a huge believer in metabolic flexibility. I don't believe in doing one method of fasting forever. I don't believe in doing OMAD forever. I believe in listening to your body and adjusting to what the scale does. If you're doing a method and the scale is not moving or it's bouncing up and down, that method is not for you at this time. Yeah, you may have had success with it in the past, but right now, based on your body's physiological needs, you cannot do that. And I've had this happen with me with OMAD. OMAD expired for me after eight months, after I got down to 169 pounds. I did, and I continued OMAD thinking it was like the only way. No, it's expired. Now you got to adjust to a new way of doing things. So I would recommend switching up your fasting routine together. If you're not willing to do that, do Keto OMAD. But rest assured, this is my advice. I'm not an expert. I'm not a dietitian. I'm not any of that. I just am a girl who's lost weight and I learn from the experts like Dr. Mindy Pell's Jason Fung. So important to switch things up. So yeah, I hope this was useful. I'll be doing more videos like this because these are videos I do when I'm tired and my hamstrings are burning and I feel like sleeping because I've been studying all day and I just don't know what to do for a YouTube video. So here you are. Here's the first segment of answering your questions and I hope you enjoyed it. Remember, do your research, learn as much as possible and Understand that metabolic flexibility, switching things up is important. The human body was made to be in feast or famine. It was not made to just be in famine. It was not made to just consistently fast because you can do damage to your body if you fast too much. Especially when you have calories under 1200, you're going to stress out your thyroid. You need to eat. It needs to be balanced out. That is key. Anyway, if you made it this far into the video, just write in the word balance. And I'm sending you guys my love. Take care. Bye.